In this video, we're building on what we learned from index numbers, so make sure you feel confident on those first. We're going to look at interpreting index numbers, which include RPI and CPI, interpreting GDP values, and calculating and interpreting weighted index numbers. Now, to be honest, the main um, chunk of this particular topic is definitions and learning what they mean, so we're going to spend a bit of time on those. We will start off with the RPI. The RPI, the Retail Price Index, is about a rate of change, okay, so it's about how much things change and it's talking about prices of everyday life things. So the th sorts of things we're looking at the change in price of are mortgage payments, heating, food and petrol. And the government actually uses the retail price index, so the rate of change of the price of these things, to set the interest rates for student loans, so how much interest you have to pay on your student loan. Okay, so that's the RPI. We're also going to look at the CPI and then to compare them. So the CPI is the consumer price index, and it also measures the rates of change in price of everyday life items, but it does not include mortgage payments. And the government um, uses this to update state benefits and pensions every year. So let's just look at these two different price indexes back to back to ensure we know the differences. Okay, so the R stands for retail and the C for consumer, and they both are price index numbers, which means they're both about rate of change of price, and this is everyday items. Some of which are the same, but one key one which is different. And the retail and consumer price indexes are used by the government to set different things. Okay, hopefully you've got a bit of an idea of what these two separate price indexes are, and we'll look at using them later. One final note on the RPI and CPI. They are both chain-based index numbers that we looked at in the previous video, and they show annual or monthly percentage changes in price. So these are both chain-based, showing either monthly or annual changes in price. We're going to now look at GDP, which is another definition you need to know about. You might already know this from geography, um, but we'll have a look at it. So the GDP is the gross domestic product. And this is about what's produced by a country in a specific time period, often every year. And it's about the goods and services a country produces every year. So in England, we might produce milk, and that's a good. We also are particularly good at producing um, financial services in London. That's how we get a lot of our money. And so that would be a service that would help us um, have a larger gross domestic product. Often this might be quarterly, which means four times a year, a quarter of the year. So we can look at the general pattern across many quarters. And in fact, looking at this pattern is how we define whether or not a country is in recession. We say an economy is in recession, which you've probably heard about the word recession quite a lot. An economy is in recession when its GDP falls in two or more successive quarters. That means two quarters next to each other has to have a falling GDP. So if we're looking at two or more successive quarters, here only goes down for one quarter. So that is not <clears throat> a recession. But here, definitely two or more. So this would be a recession here. Then we're going up, that's good, up, up. And then here down twice, that's two successive quarters. So there'd be a recession there. And from here, more than two successive quarters. So quite a few recessions on this graph. Right, we'll do an example in a minute, but we just need to have a formula in order to answer this question. So the CPI, Consumer Price Index, is weighted. And this is to reflect the importance of different items in a shopping basket. 
This changes every year to reflect changes in what people spend their money on. Okay, so the formula is the weighted index number is the current weighted mean price divided by the base year weighted mean price times 100. And although this might initially look a little confusing, this is basically what we looked at last time in that it's the new over the original times 100. It's just GCSE percentage change that we're looking at, remembering that index is about percentages but without the percentage sign. Um, so we're going to have a look at an example, but you might need to recap for yourself what the weighted mean is. I'll give you the formula, but um, if you're a little unsure, then I recommend spending a bit of time recapping that. So I've noted down the formula for the weighted mean, but I will also explain it in terms of the worked example in a way which will hopefully stick in your head a little bit more. Okay, let's move on to the worked example then. So in this worked example, looking at some groceries in July 2014 and the same in July 2015. We've got a number of different items. We've got the price in 2014, the price in 2015 and the weight, which is out of 100 and are the percentages spent on them in an average week. Okay, so we'd have to first of all work out the weighted means for 2014 and for 2015. So instead of thinking of this as a weight, you could almost think of it as a frequency. For example, you could think of this as 20 items of 110 pence, 26 items of 275 pence, 6 items of 950, etc. So if instead of weight you thought of this as frequency, then you can calculate the mean in the same way that you would in GCSE. So let's try that. Let's find the mean of 2014. So do 20 times 110 plus 26 times 275, etc. like this. And note that when I divide it, I'm not dividing it by 6, because there are 6 different numbers here, but I'm dividing it by the sum of these numbers. If I add all these numbers together, the total frequency. And now I can just pop those numbers into my calculator. And when I do that, I get 187p. So the weighted mean for 2014 is 187 pence. And now I'm going to do the same for 2015. Try pausing the video and seeing if you can do it yourself and checking your answer afterwards. OK, hopefully that's what you got. 210 pence to the nearest pence. So those are our weighted means for 2014 and 2015. We now need to work out the weighted index number for the price of foods in 2015. So all of these items are foods and we're taking 2014 as the base year. So in this case we're just putting the new price out of the original price and multiplying by 100. So my new price, my more recent number, is this. This is my base year and I'm just going to put it over that, new over the original, multiplied by 100, and that gives me 1112, sorry, 112.3796791, etc. So, to one decimal place, that's 112.4%. Okay, we don't really need to write percent because it's an index number, but just so we know that's what it is. So that means from here to here, it's 112%. So this is 112% of this. So for part C, by what percentage did these prices increase? Well, from the original 100% to 112%, the increase is just the difference from 100 which is 12%, or in this case, 12.4% to be precise. Okay, see if you can have a go at the questions yourself now, using what you learned about chain-based index numbers and about RPI, CPI and GDP, and can I strongly recommend you spend a bit of time making revision cards of those definitions.